Can't believe we're about to have this conversation, but about two weeks ago, an investment opportunity was put in front of me in which my neighbor was interested in selling their home. It's a property that I told myself it, it ever came available for sale, I was gonna buy it. But it just turns out that they wanted more than what I was willing to pay, which is not really uncommon with investing. But this time around, I was presented with another investment opportunity that in some people's eyes has a similar value of 400,000. So here I was asking myself, do I invest in real estate or do I invest in Bitcoin? Or do I invest in both? I'll start off by admitting it. I've been somewhat of a Bitcoin hater for quite some time now. I've traded it at least a dozen times since 2017, but I never really saw it as an investment. Uh, I didn't really feel as though there's a use case that is one that is a reality. So when people were telling me that I have to buy it as a hedge against inflation, I always told them, listen, I own real estate. That is the OG when it comes to hedging against inflation. When the money supply goes up, real estate goes up. When rates go down, real estate goes up. So what was different this time around? Well, I'll tell you, when this guy decided to invest in Bitcoin, I realized I was looking at it the wrong way. Now in advance, I wanna tell you, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a real estate agent that invests in real estate, sometimes stocks, and on occasion, cryptocurrencies. Now, here I am looking at this investment property and saying, listen, I can either put down 25% on this home or I can buy a couple of Bitcoin. So I wanna take you through the thought process and give you the pluses and minuses that I see with both. And maybe this will help you evaluate if you ever have to run into this situation. Now, if you're not familiar with Bitcoin, I don't really have time to go over Bitcoin as a whole. You can totally go down a YouTube rabbit hole and get a much better explanation than I can give you. But in short, people consider it to be digital gold or a storage of value and arguably a currency. But I'm gonna be talking about Bitcoin today as an investment. Investors? Possibly you. And compare it with real estate and take you through the pluses and minuses that I see. So let's go. So let's start with the pluses of Bitcoin. Number one has to be the appreciation opportunities. If it is indeed gonna be compared to gold or considered digital gold, then if you just look at the market cap, which has topped 1 trillion at one point, and look at the market cap of actual gold, which is about 11 trillion, well, then you could say that if it does overtake gold or gets equal to gold in terms of asset values, then it could go 10 times where it's at today, which is you know anywhere from 450 to 500,000. Now let's go on to number two, ease of use. Now, while Bitcoin isn't really accepted at most retail stores, it is pretty easy to sell. So if it is a storage of value for you and you need to liquidate it, let's say you have $10,000 worth of Bitcoin and you need to extract that $10,000, well, you can just simply sell it or transfer it to another wallet. As to where real estate, it takes 60 to 90 days to pull that equity out of the house. So there's an advantage for Bitcoin. Number three is media exposure. It looks like Bitcoin is all over the news mediums right now. Bitcoin, the digital currency created a dozen years ago. About is Bitcoin. It's been all over the news. Because See you guys. Take care. Take care. Hey, would you recommend buying Bitcoin? You know what's funny? I was just talking to my buddy about that. Now what's different this time around versus 2017 is that it does seem to be a legitimate asset in other people's eyes, especially the financial institutions. So that is certainly a plus for Bitcoin. So let's get into some of the minuses, all right? We gotta start with number one, which is depreciation opportunities. Well, I don't feel like Bitcoin is gonna go to zero, right? Like I don't feel like I'm gonna wake up and be like, oh my God, Bitcoin's worth nothing now. I do feel like there's a 25 or 30% correction around the corner at any given time. Like by the end of this video, Bitcoin could be worth significantly less. And what makes that frustrating is the fact that, you know, if it's a storage of value, I mean, you're not expecting your bank account to change, your balance to change every minute and potentially be worth significantly less. You know, I know a lot of people are hopeful that it's worth more, but there, it's very real that it could be worth significantly less just based off of some minor bad news and people just start to sell it. So that is a number one, and I think that's people's worst fear. Number two is no government backing. It's not FDIC insured, so when you go to invest in Bitcoin, it does point out to you that 
there is no FDIC insurance on this asset. Also, without saying it, governments aren't really a big fan of Bitcoin as a whole because think about it. If they lose control of the money supply, what control do governments really have? So, you know, this is why you'll see them come out and say it's a very risky asset and they're not really pushing it. And listen, all we need is a little bit of government regulation and it could absolutely tank. Now, Bitcoin lovers will tell you the opposite. They'll say that it's actually good for Bitcoin. But I mean, let's talk. Let's think about this. It will tank in the near term if there's regulation that comes out. You're going to have to wait or hodl, so they say, for quite some time for that to come back and then, you know, appreciate from there. So just caution. And the third negative with Bitcoin is the use case. Well, it can be considered a currency. I don't really ever see it being used as a currency. It's like using gold as a currency. You know, it really is a storage of value, which kind of makes it a one trick pony, right? There's a lot of other cryptocurrencies out there that do plenty of things, smart contracts and, you know, a whole lot of stuff that I don't even know about. So when you have all of those coming to the market, you know, you have to be concerned that the use case of Bitcoin is really only one use case, which is a storage of value. And if that goes away, what is it worth? All right, so let's talk about boring old real estate now. We'll start with the pluses. Number one, the history of resistance against inflation. Now, when talking about hedging inflation, it's hard to argue that there's a better asset class than real estate. Now, for people like myself who need to dumb it down quite a bit, there's a really good explanation on this on a website called Investopedia. I'll read this for you right now. It reads, there is a correlation between inflation and house prices. In fact, there are correlations between inflation and any good with a limited supply. To illustrate, consider an economy that has a money supply of only $10 and five identical houses in the whole economy. Each house would be priced at $2, assuming no other goods in the economy. Now, suppose the central bank decides to print more money and the money supply expands to $20. Now, each house would be priced at $4. In this simplistic example, increasing the money supply, causing inflation and house prices to increase. Now, taking that into account, with interest rates staying low and the opportunity of properties to go up in value, there's some major investment opportunities right now as we're looking at possible inflation. The second plus is government backing. So not only can you buy insurances on your home and your loan, but the government generally wants people to own real estate. So in times where real estate prices and values start to slip, you can see the government step in to correct those issues and you just won't see that with cryptocurrency. And number three is amortization, right? The thought of somebody else paying down your mortgage over time. So you're making that initial investment of 100,000 and you know that at some point in time, it's going to be worth 400,000, but somebody else is paying for the remaining balance. So you're putting that 25% down and you know within the third, next 30 years or so, that additional 75% will be added to the value of your personal worth. That's not even taking into account the increase in value of the home, right? That doesn't really happen with cryptocurrencies. You're not buying 25% of one and somebody's paying for the rest of it and you just hope that it's gonna be worth 400,000. So let's talk about some of the negatives with real estate. And we'll start with number one, it's not hassle-free. If you think you could just buy an investment property, collect rent and never have any issues, don't invest in real estate, you're gonna be greatly disappointed. The second negative with real estate is the cost of maintenance. And it's not like you just buy it and it's just a one-time fee. You're gonna to have to maintain this property over time. If you have a single or multi-family, you'll have to replace that roof. You're likely gonna to have to replace a boiler or a cooling system. So these are major ticket items that you have to budget for. And if you have a condo, well listen, taxes are always gonna go up. HOAs are always gonna go up. And you have to account for those things. As to where investing in Bitcoin is pretty low maintenance. The only thing you really need to do is buy it and make sure you never forget your password ever. And the third and final minus for real estate is the time it takes to transact. You may have built up plenty of equity in the home, but it's not like you can just immediately tell the bank you want your money. You're either gonna to have to refinance it or sell it. And both scenarios take time. If you're gonna sell it, it's gonna take anywhere from 45 to 90 days on average to get your money out. And if you were doing that because you were presented with another opportunity to invest, well, 
that opportunity may not wait for you to close on your home in order to have your funds available. As to where with cryptocurrency, you basically just transfer it or sell it and then you immediately have those funds available to you. Okay, so taking all of the pluses and minuses into account, what did I decide to do? Well, I did buy some Bitcoin. I won't tell you how much or what I paid for it because I don't wanna mislead anybody, uh, but I will tell you how I made the decision of how much to buy. Smarter people than me, all of the financial advisors and well-off business people, even the ones that don't really believe in it, say that put 10% of your investable amount into Bitcoin but you also have to expect the fact that it could absolutely go to zero. It's not like betting on black or red and you know you either win or lose, but it could very well go to zero. So you have to expect that as a possibility. So for real estate, I am gonna buy real estate. Um, and I'm gonna be looking in a market that's come down a little bit during the pandemic. I look at the market data, I go through the reports, and those are the areas that I'm hunting down. Uh, now, when we look at it, in terms of what I have to invest, 90% of that amount is going to go into real estate property, and then I put 10% into Bitcoin. And that's the plan that I came up with. So I hope this was helpful for you. It's kind of a fun topic, and it's a real story. So if you have any questions about real estate, call, text, or email. I'm happy to help. And if you have any questions about Bitcoin, just go to YouTube. Everybody on there is way smarter than me, and they'll explain it a lot better. Thanks again. Talk to you soon.